Welcome to the Grim Leftovers Show with Grimnir every Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern on reallibertymedia.com and rlmradio.xyz. Oh, yeah, I'm back once again, folks. It is January 7th, 2019. This is the Grim Leftover Show. I am Grimner, and you are live on RLM Radio, reallibertymedia.com, and rlmradio.xyz, plus all of the other sites that we go, the show goes on out to, and we're glad to have you here with us this evening. We, me, uh, I'm so used to saying we because, uh, you know, Fricker's Ball, it's always me and the moose, but anyway, it's just, it's just me on this show. So, uh, welcome to 2019. That's right, this is the first show for 2019. The last show was on uh, December 31st, New Year's Eve. So, uh, hi and howdy to the folks at the various websites. I, 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 I visit realliberty.org, Liberty, Real minds.com, uh, freedomsnetwork.com, uh, all, all of the other places, Twitter, and of course, most, uh, most importantly right here, in the Real Liberty Media chat on irc.freenode.net where you got great folks such as uh, the barman and Beetle, Mr. Cowboy Tech and myself and the Moose Girl, Miss Kate and DC there, uh, as Mo Chloe, Chalcedony, Miss Circle, oh Circle where are you at? And we got Graham Z who should be back for her show on Wednesday night once again. It's, it's been a couple weeks now and we miss her. Uh, we got Don C, I B Don C, Meester Meister Brow, the Ponder Gander Vin E. Yeah, he's uh, he's got that new show going on Fridays too. Uh, new edition of his old show on Fridays too. We got the Poxifieds, Poxophones, uh, Rain and the Fluke Bot, and Mr. Rob Works, Mr. Romes, and uh, the actual Vinny himself, not the Ponder Gander version. And we also have a uh, Phantom and Cyborg Noodle and Dakota. Dan from 10EC coming in. Howdy, Dan. Uh, we got Frumpy and Grummet and Java Doctor and JJ. Yes, the Jabberwocky himself. Uh, Mr. Kozu, Denson the Bois. Box of Home, Bone Sauce, Sock Rabbit, Skittle, Yahweh, Yahweh. Not just everybody gets Yahweh listening to their show. ha 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 ha. Spike that volume a bit. What are you talking about there, son? It's up pretty good. Uh, it should be coming up pretty good. Uh, anyway, I, as far as I can tell from my levels here, we got pretty good levels going on. Um, if, I, if I need to boost it up uh, in, in the podcast later on, I'll, I will do so. But for now, it looks pretty good. All right. So, well, this show is, is uh, for those of you familiar with Grim Leftovers, is to, to cover the leftover stories that uh, I didn't have time to get to during the Freakers Ball, which happens a lot because I, I mark a lot of stories and I only get to so many of them. But, uh, you know, that's that's how it goes. Anyway, I hope, you're not, hope your 2019 is going fine so far. But we're going to start off with a new story, a brand, a brand new story. Uh, I read the chat sometimes, and it makes me laugh. Uh, anyway, this uh, story just came out today. It's on, it's on The Intercept. It's uh, by Glenn Greenwald. Uh, and you may recall uh, the initial story back from June or something earlier this year, last year, last year, now, no, yeah, last year, uh, where U.S. diplomats down in Cuba were, were getting ill, really ill, and, and having big problems. Well, this story comes out now. NBC and MSNBC blamed Russia for using sophisticated microwaves to cause brain injuries in U.S. diplomats in Cuba. The culprits were likely... Hal Anthony, you listening? The culprits were likely... Crickets! <laughs> I know he's listening. He, he tweeted out. He retweeted the story... Uh, a little earlier. Anyway, uh, M NBC News and MSNBC specialize in repeating and disseminating 
what U.S. intelligence officials tell them to say, and then calling that servitude reporting. Those two networks really are the all but official, but official outlets for the CIA messaging. And th this status has led their brightest on-air stars to broadcasting a series of extremely consequential stories that turned out to be uh, humiliatingly wrong. The stenographic and, and highly jingoistic practice of mindlessly reciting the whispered claims of anonymous intelligence officials is what notoriously led to the New York Times and other leading U.S. media outlets to deceive the country into believing Dick Cheney and Paul Wolfowitz fairy tales about the Iraqi WMDs and Jeffrey Goldberg's tale about Saddam's alliance with Al Qaeda. Al Qaeda. I, I get that mixed up. I, I just, you know. Anyway, but while many of these outlets apologized for that behavior and vowed to avoid it in the future, NBC and MSNBC have committed themselves to it with greater vigor than ever, as evidenced by the increasing prominence of their national security reporter, Ken Delanian, whose entire career has been defined by repeating what the CIA tells him to say, and has thus been plagued by one embarrassing false story after the next. <laughs> They would be embarrassing if these people had any conscience or scruples, but they don't. Anyway, on Friday, uh, veteran national security reporter William Arkin announced his departure from the network, uh, blasting them as stenographic servants of the security state agencies in pro-war propaganda. And I must say to him, <laughs> hooray! <laughs> I mean, it, it may be way late and way down the line, but to actually stand up, grow a set of balls, and walk away from these assholes, i, I got to give you props for that, Mr. William Arkin, even though I never heard of you before this. <laughs> anyway, uh, noting that ex-generals and CIA officials dominate the NBC and MSNB, MSNBC airwaves, Arkin wrote, in many ways, NBC just began emulating the national security state itself. Busy and profitable, adding the national security leaders and generals we have are allowed to do their things unmolested. Not that they don't molest others, but uh, they can do their stuff unmolested. We now have what might be the most vivid, reckless, and dangerous illustration yet of how these two networks function. If their behavior weren't so journalistically shameful and destructive, this would be darkly humorous. Oh, believe you me, it is still darkly humorous. <laughs> Last September, on the symbolic, symbolically meaningful date of September 11th, that would be Rome's birthday, NBC and MSNBC breathlessly trumpeted what they regarded as a major exclusive scoop that Russia, Russia, the evil Russia, is the main suspect in what network, the network called mysterious attacks that led to brain injuries in U.S. personnel in Cuba. They put loyalist Ken Delanian on the air to explain, uh, based, needless to say, on the script given to him by intelligence officials who are always as shielded from accountability by them with anonymity, that sophisticated microwaves or one of or one or another type of electromagnetic weapon were likely used on the US government workers. And and if you know me, you know that I, I love the idea. Well, not not the idea of them having them and using them, but just the idea of of, of those kind of weapons electromagnetic and sophisticated microwave weapons and uh, uh, other other brain disrupting uh, weapons like that but I don't want them them to they to have them and, and use them against us but uh, that that was their story <laughs> that was their story <laughs> I gotta need a sip of water here
It would be impossible to parody that. Permit me to highlight my favorite line from Delanian. The other interesting thing that we're reporting here is the, that one of the technologies used to injure these American spies and diplomats was some kind of microwave weapon that is so sophisticated that Americans don't even fully understand it. Yet those poor American CIA officials who are such innocent naifs that they, they, they're not even aware of the latest developments in villainous technological weaponry. Throughout the day, MSNBC hyped its exciting scoop about the mysterious attack on U.S. diplomats. Uh, Peace-seeking diplomats in Cuba, presumably, to do things like create fake Twitter networks to lure young Cubans into receiving U.S. propaganda, encouraging them to destabilize their own country? Uh, that, that kind of peacekeeping? <laughs> peace-seeking? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> one six-minute segment led by Andrea Mitchell, who began to report by announcing that the intelligence officials now believe that Russia is the leading suspect. And it was no accident. Featured Bush Cheney Deputy National Security Advisor Juan Zaret, who now, needless to say, works for NBC as an analyst along with <laughs> reporter Josh Lederman, who said Russians' guilt is now more than just a theory. They're the main suspect. And he said Russia's guilt is backed up by interceptions of Russian communications. Oh, you can trust us. We got their communicado stuff. Communicado? Communications. Okay, in, in this, <laughs> they're not quite in communicado. Anyway, uh, as this discussion unfolded, the, the graphic on NBC's screen was crafted for the most sensationalistic expression. Russia is the main suspect in the brain injury attacks on American diplomats. Oh, yes. There's a beautiful graphic here in this article. <laughs> anyway, let me hop on down here. If I could find... I, I, I didn't highlight the spot, but I should I should have. Um, where, they, where they get to talking about... Here, here it is. Um... One of the scientists, Dr. Stubbs, emphasized the certainty of their findings in an interview with the New York, New York Times. I can fairly definitively, I can say fairly definitively that it is the AP releasing, uh, re released a recording of a cricket, a cricket, a cricket from behind the woodshed. And we think we know what the species is. The villain behind the noises is the male Indies short-tailed cricket pictured below in what NBC News may soon, may soon use uh, this Interpol mugshot. And they have a nice picture of the Indies short-tailed cricket here. Uh, in, anyway, that's what it all comes down to. Uh, M NBC and MSNBC have been reporting this all as some kind of super Russian spy thing going on. They were attacking people down there in Cuba. But no. No, 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 no. Well... Uh, we don't know what happened to these people's brains, but the sounds that were being reported and released uh, there on on those as the sound of these weapons was uh, crickets. <laughs> oh, I love this stuff. <laughs> Believe you me. Oh, man. Anyway, so, yeah, how about that? <laughs> Hal Anthony's been right all this time. And we just didn't realize how right he was. <laughs> all right, now we're going to go to an article from Zero Hedge dating back to November 27. It's not really um, breaking news, e even at that time when, when this article came out. It wasn't really breaking news, uh, but, you know, I, I think we've all been well aware of this for a decade, but uh, here we go. A worldwide debt default is a real possibility. No shit. <laughs> uh, is debt good or bad? 
The answer is yes. Global, global debt has increased by $57 trillion since 2007. And that's just the numbers they report, they report and tell you about. Um, yeah, it, it's, 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 it's quite the thing. Uh, if, if you look at the charts and graphs that they have in here. Uh, debt is future spending pulled forward in time. Got that? Yeah, it's a little, it's a little, it's a little, a little confusing thing to wrap your head around. It lets you buy something now for which you otherwise don't have the cash yet. Uh, it means probably you're buying something you don't really need with money you don't have. Yeah. Anyway, whether it's wise or not depends on what you buy. Debt to educate yourself. What now? What now, Vinny? I don't know what he's talking about. Vinny speaks in riddles. He's always confusing me with his words. <laughs> it's the danger of having a chat room doing her during a radio show. <laughs> oh, man. Anyway, so uh, debt to educate yourself so you can get a better job may, may be a good idea. Borrowing money to finance your vacation? Yeah, no. No, 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 no. Uh, but even that, debt to educate yourself, when most of that education could probably be done for free. Uh, there, there's unlimited resources, if anybody that's got the interwebs. Uh, of course, the interwebs themselves are typically not free, so there's that. But you're paying for that anyway. So, so um, But most of the stuff that you're going to be picking up in any kind of educational facility, uh, you can get for free right here on these in these grand old interwebs. And uh, you can certainly educate yourself and get yourself a long way uh, towards what you need done if you have the determination and the drive and the stick to itness that is required for such a thing. The problem is that many people, businesses and governments, borrow because they can. <laughs> it's that simple. It's been possible in the last decade only because central banks made it so cheap free, even sometimes negative interest. It was irrational in that respect, but it's growing less so as the central banks start to tighten. They've barely, barely tightened. Anyway, earlier this year, and by the way, this these uh, interest rate increases you see going on through the Federal Reserve and other central banks globally, you, you're not going to see any of those. If you're a person that has money in a savings institution, those increases are not going to help you. You are not going to get any of that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Earlier this year, this guy who wrote this is uh, Goldcore. Oh, John Modlin, Forbes.com. Okay. Earlier this year, he wrote a series of articles uh, predicting a debt train wreck. In eventual liquidation. He dubbed it the Great Reset. He estimated that we have another year or two before the crisis becomes evident. Now I'm having second thoughts. Recent events tell me the reckoning could be closer. And I thought just a few months ago, then he thought just a few months ago, it is closer. We're, we're right, we're, we're on the verge. We're standing on the edge, looking down into the crevasse. And uh, there's 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 a there's a horde of of people coming up behind, and they're not going to be turning back. It's a stampede. <laughs> Central banks enable debt because they think it will generate economic growth. Yeah, cheaper money it means that you can create more of it, and it, it seems like it's more because there's a higher number, but. Each each of them each of the dollars or whatever unit it is is worth less. The problem is they create debt with little regard for how it will be used. Anyway, I I don't need to really get into all this here with you either. The, the thing is, um, it's coming and it's coming fast. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so let me get a little little further down on in here. It says here's how much debt we actually have, or they actually have, I would say, because it's not my debt. I don't think it's your debt. <laughs> anyway, this is classic addiction behavior. You have to keep raising the dose to get the same high. 
uh, but centuries of history showing that every prior debt run-up eventually took its toll on the economy. There is always a day of reckoning. The U.S. economy is so huge and powerful that our current $24.5 trillion government debt, that their current... <laughs> Uh, these words slip by me sometimes, and I don't know how that happens. They're referring, in, trying to be inclusive of you and I, when it's not us, it's them. Uh, and tr 24.5 trillion government debt, including state and local, could easily grow to 40 trillion before we meet that day. It's, it's coming up really fast, but I think uh, that that numbers, you know, these numbers don't matter all that much. It says we are one recession away from having a $30 trillion U.S. government debt total. Uh, believe me, it, it, it's, it's way, way, way higher than that already. They're, they don't report it that way, but that is way, way higher than that. If you take into account all of the various things that need to be taken into account for, uh, then you're, 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 you're up to the, almost to a quadrillion there. It will happen seemingly overnight at least for those not paying attention. And deficits will stay well above a trillion dollars per year. Well above, yes, well above. <laughs> per year, every year after that. Not unlike now. Even though budget deficit is eight, under $800 billion this year, they added over $1 trillion of debt. That is due to off-budget items that Congress thinks shouldn't be on part of the normal budgetary process. It includes things like Social Security and Medicare. Well, wait a minute. Aren't people, isn't that being paid for? Isn't that being paid for uh, daily by everybody? Yeah, so uh, wh why is that even in there? Uh, they vary from time to time and year to year and can be anywhere from $200 billion to almost $500 billion. Yeah, just random little pocket change there, $200, $500 billion. Whatever. <laughs> and here's the point you need to understand. The U.S. Treasury borrows those dollars, and it goes on the total debt taxpayers owe, or they say taxpayers owe. The true deficit that adds to the debt actually is much higher than the number you see in the news. That's what I've been telling you. <laughs> anyway, um, I, I, I think we're good on this, but but the thing, you just 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 understand that it is coming and uh, as far as what you can do about it nothing there's nothing you can do it's coming i mean they have been building this up for a long long time decades and and and, and they will have to pay the piper sooner or later but the fact is they're the piper <laughs> it says they they borrow the money they're, they're not really. They just create the money amongst themselves and trade it back and forth. And it's created out of nothing. It's just electronics. It's, you push a button and suddenly you've got an extra trillion dollars there to do whatever you want with. It's just that easy. So what are they, who are they borrowing it from? The, this central bank borrows it from that central bank? It makes no difference. Anyway, enough of that. Let's move on to something more humorous in a sad way. Humorous in a sad way. From uh, KOB.com, KOB4, from November 27th as well. Iowa Council gives final approval to toy firearms ban. Yeah. Sioux City, Iowa. A city council in northwest Iowa has banned people from carrying some types of toy firearms. The Sioux City Council voted Monday for a third time to adopt an ordinance that bans pellet and BB guns. The ordinance doesn't ban Nerf or squirt guns or guns that shoot suction cup darts. But let me tell you this. Now, I can understand 
Uh, well, let me go, let me go through this part, and I'll, I'll come back here. Sioux City Police Captain Mark Kirkpatrick said officers have had multiple encounters with replica weapons and faced the question of whether to use deadly force. He has said people carrying toy firearms tend to be teenagers and young adults seeking personal protection or street cred. The Sioux City Police Department says no one in the city has died from a police encounter while carrying a toy firearm yet. But there are more than 50 such deaths nationwide each year. Okay, let me say this about that. They're going to ban pellet and BB guns. Toy guns, basically. They, toys. They, they can be useful tools. Whatever. But not the Nerf guns or the squirt guns or guns that shoot suction cup darts. However, if you come across one of these armed, uniformed thugs, clowns, and you have a squirt gun in your hand, they're going to kill you. Odds are they will shoot you dead. And then they'll say they feared for their life. They, you, they, they thought that was a real gun. It could have been a Nerf gun. Yeah, sure. It could have, it could have been a suction cup dart. Oh, that's got a projectile in it. They'll kill you. They will kill you. Over these things. And, and, and we've seen it happen. We've seen it happen in various places across the country. Now, they're, they're talking about just, just the uh, BB and pellet guns, which, by the way, can look absolutely like an actual gun, unless you know what you're looking at, which you would think a cop might want it, might know what they're looking at, but, well, you'd be wrong. <laughs> or if they do, they just don't care. They're just gung-ho and ready, ready to kill something. So, uh, there's that. I just, uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. This from December 30th of last year. Just a few couple week and a half ago. I don't even know how long ago that was. Uh, about that long ago. From uh, businessinsider.com. The 21 scariest data breaches of 2018. Now, this is one of the ones I marked to try and do on New Year's Eve, but I didn't get to. Yeah, there's just so many various lists and things like that. Um, highlights here. Data breaches in 2018 comprise the personal information of millions of people around the world. Some of the biggest victims of 2018 include, include T-Mobile, Quora, Google, Orbitz, uh, Facebook dealt with a slew of major breaches and incidents that affected more than 100 million users uh, of the popular, popular, it says, social network. I guess it's popular, all those people use it. But Anyway, uh, here are 21 of the biggest data breaches that companies faced this year. And I'll just jump down to, to some of those highlight ones. British Airways, 380,000 people, um, which they got your information from card payments. So it says a criminal hacking hack affecting bookings uh, made on the airline's website and app. Is it really that difficult? Is it really that difficult to secure your data? That's my question. Uh, Orbitz, 80, 880,000. Um, uh, the payment card information and personal data such as billing addresses, phone numbers, and emails happened on uh, between uh, January 1st, 2016 and December 22nd, 2017. So it was going on for nearly two years. Hackers access travel bookings in the website system. And, and it was going on for two years, and they didn't notice. Sing Health, one and a half million. Uh, I guess that's a Singapore health co health healthcare company. Uh, names and addresses of the Singapore government's health database. Oh, it's the government. Oh, okay. And some patient's history of dispensed medicines. Information on the Prime Minister of Singapore was specifically targeted. And it happened from May 1st of 2015 through July 4th of 2018. So over three years there. And they, they it just let, kept, kept going on. They didn't even notice. Hackers orchestrated a deliberate, targeted, and well-planned attack, according to a statement. T-Mobile, this may affect some of you. I don't know. You got T-Mobile? About 2 million people uh, were affected. 
encrypted passwords and personal data, including account numbers, billing information, and email addresses on August 20th of, of last year. I guess it was a one-day thing. I, I don't know. Uh, international group of hackers access T-Mobile servers through an API. Uh, I don't even know what some of these are. I'm just going to bypass. There's a, there's a whole bunch of them in there uh, that, that I, I am just not familiar with. And, um, and, and, and But they're all huge, and there are all these big companies, apparently, because they've all got many, many millions of people. Ticket fly. Um, personal information, including names, addresses, emails, and phone numbers. Late May of 2018, uh, a, a hacker called Is Ha Kids? I don't know. Anyway, com 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 compromised the site's uh, webmasters and, and gained access to the database titled Backstage, which contains client information for all venues, uh, promoters, and festivals that use Ticketfly services. That was 27 million people on Ticketfly. Facebook, 29 million. Uh, and that was going on for over a year from July of 2017 through September 2018. Actually, it's probably still going on. They just told you they found it at that point. Didn't say it was stopped. <laughs> Highly sensitive data. Locations, contact details, relationship status, re recent searches, devices used to log in. Uh, the hackers were able to exploit vulnerabilities in Facebook's poorly written code to get their hands on access tokens essentially digital keys that give them full access to compromised user accounts and then scrape the user's data and i don't know what these are check google plus which is now gone 52 and a half million people were affected by that private information on google plus profiles name employer job title email birth date age relationship status went on for over three years um <laughs> And apparently they stopped it and then it went on again for another week or so after that anyway earlier this year Google announced it would be shutting down Google Plus yeah because you can't just can't tell because everybody everybody's somebody else uh, Cambridge Analytica another 87 million um, my heritage which I guess is a DNA testing uh, place 92 million uh, Quora 100 million. My Fitness Pal, don't know what that is. Exactus, don't know what that is. Three hundred forty million there. Marriott Starwood Hotels, five hundred million there. Atahar, one billion, and they don't even talk about the credit reporting agencies that were affected uh, in, in, in these things, which were many, many, many more millions than all of these. Um, almost every single uh, American was affected by the. Uh, the credit reporting hack or data dump uh, depending on how you want to look at it so uh, <laughs> so so is it are, are things going to be better this year on, on the whole data breaches uh, depends who you are better if you're a hacker that wants this information <laughs> not better if you're a customer oh man yeah. Pound of gold is nice if you can get it. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> next up here. <laughs> yeah, from Investors Business Daily, Daily on December 6, 2018. Climate hoax. Global CO2 emissions spike despite Paris climate pledges. <laughs> climate change is the key phrase here uh, climate hoax for change uh, anyway three years after leaders from around the world signed on to the Paris climate agreement pledging to cut their carbon footprints global co2 emissions accelerated does anyone still think the Trumpster was wrong for pulling out of the pulling the US out of this sham agreement no, no, I don't think so. I mean, uh, people that hate him still think he was wrong. And I don't hate him. I don't care about him one way or the other. He is a meaningless turd, if you ask me. But uh, whichever. <laughs> According to the Global Carbon Project, which monitors the global CO2 emissions climbed by 
1.6% last year. They are on track to shoot up another 2.7% this year. That's after three years of annual emissions remaining flat. <laughs> I believe I talked about that 9-11 uh, thing on Friday night, Dan. Uh, yeah, you have to go back and listen to the Freakers Ball podcast, but uh, I'm fairly certain that that was, that was what happened. Worst, worse after Paris deal. Wait a minute. The accelerating growth in carbon emissions came after some 200 countries signed the Paris Agreement? Yeah. At the time, Obama was called the, the Paris Agreement an enduring agreement that reduces global carbon pollution and sets the world on a course to a low-carbon future. Ah, oh, so many things wrong with his statement. So many things wrong. <laughs> Oh, an enduring agreement, which can be overturned at any point in time, uh, that reduces global carbon pollution, as if carbon was a polluter. Uh, car carbon dioxide, which is what they're talking about here. Uh, it's not a polluter. Anyway, it sends a powerful signal that the world is firmly committed to a low-carbon future. You're a your carbon-based life form. If we get rid of you... That'll reduce the carbon. <laughs> he, he even called the agreement a turning point for the world. Right. The reality is that nations need energy to grow. And the best and most economical for forms of energy are oil, natural gas, and coal. Well, at least that's what they say. That's what they have to say. Um, I, I don't know I'm being thanked for something. I don't, I don't know what. Uh, anyway, so while all those leaders were making promises and bragging about how they 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 were saving the planet from uh, and their economies, what 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 who wrote this? Well, <laughs> we're bragging how they were saving the planet. Their economies were increasing the use of fossil fuels because they're not really stopping people from using what they call fossil fuels, which again is another misnomer. They're not fossil fuels. There's these, all this stuff wasn't generated by a bunch of dead dinosaurs and plants. <laughs> it's constantly, it's constantly recreated. Uh, anyway, uh, anyway, the New York Times laments in its front page story, even as coal has fallen out of favor, not really, uh, in some markets. Uh, the rise in emissions has been driven by stronger demand for natural gas and oil. Even as the use of renewable energy like solar and wind powder power has expanded exponentially, it has not been enough to offset the increase in fuel fo fossil fuel fo oils uh, and coals. Yeah. Um, a anyway, the, the thing is, they're lying through their teeth, through their ass. It's not. It's got nothing to do with protecting the environment. It's got to do with controlling you. Squeezing a little more out of you. And uh, getting, getting, just, yeah, getting that control over you. Um, anyway, read through that. Invest, Investor's Business Daily is, is, is generally a very good site. And, and uh, to go along with that, they are too. I don't know what that means. Uh, all right. Uh, to go along with that, there's this from newspunch.com on uh, November 19, 2018. He's just talking. See, he, he, see people talk in riddles, and, and, and I, don't, I don't understand. Anyway, scientists find the Earth is cooling, not warming. NASA predicts a mini ice age. <laughs> <laughs> well, it feels like a mini ice age here where I live right now. Anyway, humanity could soon face a long, cold winter, which could see the temperatures around the globe plunge, plunge to record lows that will herald a mini ice age, according to new scientific research by NASA, who I never trust about anything, but that's what they're talking about here. Anyway... 
It says, we see a cooling trend, Martin Milzganak of NASA's Langley Research Center told the space weather, directly contradicting decades of global warming hysteria and false science promoted by conflicted scientists, politicians, and fake news. The clap, the corporate lame ass propaganda. They're, they're, he's calling it mainstream media here, but it's the clap, the corporate lame ass propaganda machine. High above Earth's surface, near the edge of space, our atmosphere is losing heat energy. If current trends continue, it could soon set a space age record for cold. Metro reports, that would be the metro.co.uk, sunspot spot activity follows a cycle which is believed to last 11 years, uh, or in there, around, aroundabouts there, as the number of patches, uh, peaks, and drops. There have been very few sunspots on the sun for most of this year. And that's true. If you are a sun watcher, uh, you've seen the, the blank disc day after day after day after day uh, during last year. So that's uh, what that means is it could get very cold very quickly. However, it's difficult to predict the impact of solar activity on the Earth. And scientists are still debating how sunspots affect our weather. It could happen. In a matter of months, Milzanik added, or however you say his name. Earlier this year, NASA released a picture showing the blank face of the sun, looking more like a snooker ball than, a, than the rolling surface of a super hot star. The sun is predicted to reach its solar minimum low point in 2019 or 2020, so we're just getting into it. We still got some time on that. Yeah, um... Perhaps the most famous period of low sunspot activity was the Maunder Minimum. Not perhaps, absolutely the, 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 the most famous period in the 17th century. Uh, during that time, there was a little ice age when London's Thames River froze over. Although researchers believe that global warming uh, will stop this <laughs> happening again. <laughs> sure it will. That Ben Bear Pig will be right there. Anyway, solar minimum may enhance the uh, the effect of space weather. Uh, solar minimum may enhance the effect of space space weather, disrupt communications and navigations, and even cause space junk to hang around. Last year, scientists claimed that the chilling effect on the lack of sunspots could actually save us from global warming. Really, you're going to save us from something that doesn't exist? All right. Although her claims were hotly disputed, Val Val Valentina Zarakova uh, sounds like a Russian to me, a professor of mathematics at Nor Northumbria University, published a paper which contains the first serious prediction of a reduction of solar activity that might affect human lives. And that was their actual title. I hope global warming will be overridden by this effect, <laughs> giving humankind and the Earth, uh, 30 years to sort out our pollution. Pollution. So she's still got the propaganda in the brain. <laughs> oh, boy. I tell ya. <laughs> Give me a second here. I gotta cough. Sorry about that. All right. Now, I th this this article, I'm not sure if I covered it somewhere else or not, but I wanted to cover it here. Yeah, Rob works. We are all going to die. It's just a matter of when. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, from November 28th, uh, 2018, on themindunleashed.com. Like I said, I may have shared this on Freakers before. I, I don't actually recall. Innocent grandma jailed for three months after police thought her cotton candy was meth. Yeah, these are the geniuses out there. The, uh, oh, wait, they're not there to serve and protect. That's right. Never mind that. A Georgia grandmother was sent to jail after police thought they found a baggie of meth in the car she was riding in. Unfortunately for the two deputies involved, the plastic bag did not contain any meth. In fact, the bag didn't even contain drugs. 
the Monroe County deputies stumbled upon a bag of cotton candy in Miss Cotton Candy and mistook it for methamphetamine. Say what? <laughs> it's cotton candy. How does that look like methamphetamine to you? To make matters worse, an erroneous field test confirmed the deputy's suspicions. This is what they're using to put you in jail, these field tests. Unfortunately for Dasha Fincher, the mistake landed her in jail for three whole months. Now that Fincher is free, she is suing the three officers involved for violating her rights and for wrongful imprisonment. Fincher also names Searchy Acquisition Company, the maker of the field kit used by the deputies in the lawsuit. Fincher filed the suit on November 15th. Anyway, there's the, uh, the, the, the actual filing uh, in, de embedded in here. In one year alone, Searchy's field kit, kit, field kit test, the NARC 2, produced 145 po false positives. Probably a whole lot more than 145 false positives. That's just the ones they're going to tell you about. In that one state alone, in Georgia, potentially having sent 145 innocent people to jail. Yeah, it's funny in a sad way. Oh. Okay. Uh, anyway, according, according to the suit, blue food coloring... <laughs> Blue food coloring likely caused the false positive. <laughs> While sitting in Monroe County Jail for those three months, Fincher missed out on the birth of her two, her twin grandchildren, her daughter's miscarriage. I think that's yeah, fine to miss out on a miscarriage. Uh, she also refused medical care, or was re also refused medical care for multiple ailments, including a broken wrist and an ovarian cyst. Fincher was a passenger in a car that was pulled over on December 31, 2016. The deputies, Cody Maples and Alan Henderson, claimed the car's window tinting was too dark, though they later told the occupants that it was not actually a violation. After requesting to search the vehicle, deputies found a large, open, clear plastic bag which contained a light blue substance spherical in shape. According to the lawsuit, <laughs> despite both Driver and Fincher explaining the bag contained cotton candy, which they could have smelled to verify, the deputies proceeded to field test it. Then the test came back positive for methamphetamine, resulting in the immediate arrest of both Fincher and her boyfriend. <sighs> and they set her bail at a million dollars. Cotton candy, million dollar bail. Three months in jail. I hope she, I hope she, uh, I hope she rakes these guys over the coals. Personally. <laughs> Vinny. <laughs> Alright. This from December 22nd, 2018 on Slashdot.org. Slashdot, if you're not familiar with them, they're, 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 a good, they're a good little site. It's just they give you little snippets of an article to look at that they found somewhere and found interesting. A delivery robot spontaneously burst into flames. Longtime Slashdot reader Annie Mojo shares this article from The Verge. An autonomous food delivery robot burst into flames on a Berkeley, California walkway. As first reported by the Daily Californian, Kiwi, the startup that manages or bakes and manages the 100 strong fleet of robots, issued a statement to say that the fire was quickly extinguished by a passerby before the city's fire department arrived and doused the machine in foam. It said that it believed the fire was caused by human error. Sure they did. <laughs> I'm sure they did. If they want to stay in business, you got to say it was caused by human error. When a faulty battery was uh, manually inserted into the robot, eventually causing thermal runaway, the same issues that resulted uh, in the recall of Samsung's Galaxy Note 7 phones, 
Kiwi says that the new piece of software will rigorously monitor the state of each battery to prevent anything like this from ever happening again. <laughs> I hate that phrase. The, we've got to stop this from ever happening again. You can't. Don't even try. Don't make that crap up. Uh, you can try and prevent stuff, but you can never stop every anything from ever happening again. Anyway, Kiwi said the incident resulted in some smoke and minor flames. Well, there's a, a video that you could check out. It uh, It's fully ablaze. <laughs> Anyway, so the video shows the robot engulfed in the kind of fiercely uh, burning fireball typically associated with battery fires. Yeah, some smoke and minor flames. <laughs> I understand trying to protect your business, but I mean, the video is right there. Uh, uh, who who you, who you, who you lying to? <laughs> All right, this, this article is from a little bit earlier, older, and, and I, I, I don't even know if it's true. Did I share this before? I don't know if I've shared this before. It is possible that I have shared this story before. But I like the story, and I'm going to share it again here with you now. Uh, whether whether I shared it here on The Leftovers or shared it on The Freaker's Ball. It seems, it seems like a story I would have talked about. I don't know. Here you go. Florida man bites his brother's penis off after he walks in on his brother having sex with his cousin <laughs> on his favorite Dragon Ball Z blanket. Now, I know you're all thinking, well, that guy's got to be from Arkansas. But uh, I, I think he was actually from, yeah, it's Florida. He's a Florida man. Yeah, he, he sounds like he's from Arkansas. And it sounds like a scene that's probably common in Arkansas. Wouldn't even hit the news in Arkansas. Let's give you that headline again. Florida man bites his brother's penis off after he walks in on his brother having sex with his cousin on his favorite Dragon Ball Z blanket. <laughs> uh, in a, <laughs> it says in a bizarre event that could only have happened in Florida. No, I'm pretty sure it could happen pretty much throughout the South. Uh, a, a man has bitten his brother's penis off after he found him having sex with his cousin on his favorite Dragon Ball Z blanket. It's still unknown what pissed him off, the incest or the fact that they did it on his favorite blankie, or maybe both. We don't know for sure, and we might never know. What we do know is that what he did was uh, fairly extreme. The, it, it, getting... It, I, <laughs> he was arrested yesterday and said he regrets nothing. The, the, in this way, it will never happen again. Eh, he's kind of right about that. <laughs> her, 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 her cousin could only describe him as savage, and she hopes he rots in prison. Uh, her brother was hospitalized with several injuries, and he might never be able to use his dick again because it was completely destroyed. Uh, doctors are doing everything they can to reconstruct it. <laughs> they should have just like a bucket of penises hanging around for, for exactly that kind of situation. You know, da down there in the in those in the territory, um, <laughs> you, you would think that in places like Florida and Arkansas, Georgia, Mississippi, Louisiana, they, they just have like a bucket of penises available. Uh, for reattachment, because whether it's whether it's your brother biting it off for screwing your cousin uh, on his favorite blanket, or or whether it's he stuck your dick in somewhere it didn't belong, which is quite common, uh, my, it is my understanding down there, or or any number of of redneck maladies that could occur that always seem to get them in the dick, they they should just have a bucket of dicks hanging around. <laughs> for, for attachment <laughs> made to order here's your new penis that last one lasted you a good three months <laughs> alright <laughs> oh man do I want to go to another story I don't know <laughs> uh 
think we're good. Um, I, I do want to mention that uh, the sausage graft. Yeah, uh, I do. I do. <laughs> I do want to mention that tomorrow at uh, one p.m. Eastern is, is Flash uh, with his his show in a perfect world. Uh, great show that he does every every Tuesday at that time. And then Grammy, like I said, I think it's said at the top of the show, Grammy should be back on Wednesday evening. Hopefully her voice her voice has healed now and she's ready to get back in that rocket chair and and blast away and get us get us some good information and good laughs, good different various health info, all that kind of stuff that she does. Uh, on Thursday uh, is 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 also Flash's new show at uh, the 5 p.m. 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, which which is called uh, 20% off, and uh, he covers different topics on that. That's a de- definitely a solo show that he does. He comes on here, you know, like me rambling about whatever stuff, but uh, he does less of the, the news links and more of just off the top of his head, and it's it's cool. It's cool. It's good stuff. And then uh, on Friday is uh, Vin E's revived Ponder Gander program, the radio writing series. This will be uh, part two of a 13 and a half part series at uh, noon Eastern. That, that's that's correct. Noon Eastern, I do believe. Uh, right here on RLM Radio. Uh, then at 7 p.m. Eastern, Grammy's Rocket Chair. 11 p.m. Eastern, myself and the Moose Girl on the Freakers Ball. And then uh, Saturday is uh, Flash. Once again, Flash has three shows. Count them. The, the Dark Table at noon Eastern on, on RLM Radio. With Flash, somebody, and maybe a guest. We'll see. Um, and, and then uh, Sunday is me with the blues here on RLM Radio at noon Eastern. Three hours of blues. Followed by Hal Anthony behind the woodshed opening up the big old can of whoop ass. And I, I, I will be back again once again um, next Monday at this, at this same time. Um, what else did I want to mention? I don't know. If you're if you're uh, not not a member of Real Liberty Media, well, you can't be a member of Real Liberty Media, because there's no really way to be a member. You can just come over and hang out with us. Well, that's what all we do. We're not like a membership type place. <laughs> so come on over, RealLibertyMedia.com. You can jump on into the chat. If you got your own uh, chat client, then use that. You connect to irc.freedom.net and go join Pound Pound Real Liberty Media, and you'll be here with us talking to all of us. But if you're not a member of realliberty.org, which is a social networking site, and or freedomsnetwork.com, which is also a social networking site, both closely related to reallibertymedia.com, uh, I would say join those, one or both of those sites and check them out. Yeah, realliberty.org. That's the new one. That's the fancy one. Uh, Freedoms Network is a few years older. Um, but it's not so fancy. It's built on WordPress and BuddyPress sitting on top of that. Um, also, uh, b- 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 I'll, I'll put all the follow links in the, in the post show blog so you can follow Real Liberty Media and myself in various places that you may want to follow us at. And, uh, and uh, I'm also, we're also on Minds.com and Twitter. Uh, there, is, there is a Facebook presence, but I'm not involved with it. So uh, I guess that's all. Um, yeah. That'll be good. All right. Have yourselves a good rest of your Monday. And uh, that's all. Peace.